Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used to get you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, the saints in the chat. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. You know what I'm saying? Do announcements. I'm going to do announcements. So here we go. So, church, you know what I'm saying? Uh, no, we made it. So we made it past all of the, uh, the appointed times that are covered in our law. Um, the next appointed time that's in the scripture is from the book of Esther. It's going to be Purim. Um, so that'll be a few months away. Uh, but I uh, appreciate everyone who, who participated and uh, everybody in the band app again if you want to join the band app reach out to me i'll send you the link um and uh on every sabbath at four o'clock pacific time we have a uh, uh a fellowship hour if you'd like to join that uh reach out and i'll send the link to that as well um outside of that mail any other announcements all right let's get to it um so We've been taking a couple breaks. Had him be quiet for me. We've been taking a couple breaks and and looking into a few different things, right? We did a couple special studies on marriage, um, and we also uh, have been looking at the Day of Atonement. Um, we did two studies on uh, the day at, or the week of Tabernacles, right? So now what we have to do is kind of revert our minds to where we left off, right? So if y'all remember, we had the kings of Israel. Hey, Sister Pamela. We have the kings of Israel. So let's take a look and let's try to pick up where we left off with the kings of Israel um, and see how we can, how far we can get here. So if y'all remember, Hoshea took over as king in Israel, the northern. When we say Israel, we're talking about the northern tribe, right? So it's two, it was two tribes. You have the northern tribe and you have the southern tribe. The southern tribe we call Judah. Northern tribe we call Israel. Okay. So. Israel, the northern tribe, was taken over by Hoshea. He killed uh, Pekah. So Hoshea took over. After that, the Assyrians came and they gaffled up the land from Hoshea. Now, if you remember how that happened, you had Ahaz, right? Ahaz, Jotham really cut a deal, right? Because of lack of faith. Ahaz, uh, you know what I'm saying, kind of fell into the same trap and had the uh, Assyrians come to try to help him, right? The Assyrians attempted to help him. Uh, Most High God was like, do not rely on the Assyrians. Don't worry about it. You know, because you remember Israel and Syria, not Assyria, Israel and Syria were trying to team up against Judah, right? So the northern tribe in Syria were trying to team up against Judah. Isaiah, the prophet, told Ahaz, he's like, listen, don't even worry about it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't gonna, it ain't gonna come to be. Ahaz was given the opportunity to get a sign. The most high guy asked him, tell me what sign you want so that you'll believe this. He is like, nah, I, ain't, I don't even want a sign. You know what I'm saying? Most high guy was like, okay. You know what I'm saying? I already know how this thing gonna play out now. Right? So, it ended up playing out in such a way that that led to Assyria because he called Assyria. He was like, hell, Assyria, I'll pay tribute to, to you. Can you come help me out? Right. So Assyria was like, oh, well, I'm taking over all these nations anyway. Who you say was the problem? Syria was the problem. Oh, Israel was the problem. And guess what? What he did is he came and he took over all their land. So he removed all of our brothers and sisters from Israel and put them in other nations. Right. Completely uprooted them, put them in other nations. Right. Now. We left with Gentiles because he replaced our people with Gentiles. And we're left with Gentiles in Israel, right? Hey, y'all be quiet. <laughs> so we, we left with Gentiles in Israel, right? Then 
we still have the southern tribe, which is Judah, the southern kingdom, right? We still have Judah in place. So what we're about to read is a continuation of the prophets that are talking through Judah, right? So Isaiah was a prophet. He prophesied technically to both Judah and Israel, but he was a prophet technically to Judah. And now um, we're about to read another prophet, Micah, right? So if you look up on the screen here, uh, Micah is in the same time period. He started a little bit after Isaiah. Um, so we're about to read about in, in the book of Micah. So let's grab Micah chapter one, verse one. And let's see where we get tonight. Micah chapter one, verse one. He just drinking my soda. You know what I'm talking about? Ain't asking me a thing. Ain't he drinking it upstairs. I don't know what's wrong with these boys. Y'all just do whatever y'all want to do around here. Huh? Take your butt downstairs. Oh, what's wrong with y'all? The word of the that came to Micah, the Moorishite, in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Which he so you notice the, the kings that he is prophesying in the times of Jotham, right? So you remember Jotham is the son of Uzziah, right? Remember Uzziah was the king who ran up in the temple and tried to light the incense, right? Then he ended up getting leprosy on the forehead. The priest had to had to kick him out, right? So that was that was Uzziah. Then he had a son. When he had leprosy, his son had to take over. But then that was Jotham. And then Jotham had a son named Ahaz. Um, I'm not Ahaz. Uh um, I mean, yeah, Ahaz and Ahaz then became king. And then that led into uh, the next king, which is going to be Hezekiah. We haven't got to him yet. Right. So he he's prophesying in the times of Jotham, Ahaz. And then the next king that we're going to talk about, which is Hezekiah. Keep going. Kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Hear ye people, hearken, O earth, and all that therein is. And let Yahuwah God be witness against you, Yahuwah from mm -hmm. the holy temple. For behold, the Lord cometh forth out of his place and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth. <clears throat> and the mountain shall be molten under him, and the valley shall be cleft as wax before the fire, and as the waters that are poured down a, a steep place. For the so listen to what he's saying. He's saying, listen, one day the Most High God going to come down, and when he come down, the mountain is going to be molten under him. What does that mean? Melted. That's like lava. Right? He said he's going to touch down and the mountain is going to be molten under him. And what else going to happen? He said the valley going to be what? And the valley shall be cleft as wax. Right? The so the, the, valley, the valley is going to try to hold on to the mountain. Right? So it's going to try to grab on to the mountain. So in other words, he describing this earthquake. Right? He's describing like the ground shifting, everything moving. The ground is molten lava coming down. Everything's melting, right? We're going to learn about it, but eventually what we're going to see is when the Most High God get back here, the the there's going to be a mountain that grows in Israel, and it's going to be the highest mountain. And that's where he's going to build his temple, and all the world is going to come to that mountain. Keep going. Watch this. Well, the transgression of Jacob is all this, and for the sins of the house of Israel, what is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? And what are the high places of Judah? Are they not Jerusalem? Therefore will I make Samaria as a heap of the field and as plantings of a vineyard, and I will pour down the stones thereof into the valley, and I will dis discover the foundations thereof. <clears throat> right? So he's telling us what he's going to do. He already did. We already read about him doing this. So this is Micah prophesying before it happened. Right? So this is this is what the king of Assyria did to Samaria. Right. Remember, Samaria was the town where the kings began to stay, uh, beginning with uh, our king o Amri. Right. So if you go all the way back to King Amri. Right. He was the first king that started to stay in uh, Samaria. And then after that, all the kings kind of followed that tradition and they lived in Samaria. Keep going. And all the graven images thereof shall be beaten to pieces. And all the hires thereof shall be burnt with the fire. And all the idols thereof will I lay desolate. For she gathered it of the hire of a harlot, and they shall return to the hire of a harlot. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I will wail and howl. I will go stripped and naked. I will make a wailing like the dragons in mourning as the owls. For her wound is incurable, for it is come unto Judah. He is come unto the gate of my people, even to Jerusalem. Declare ye it not at Gath, weep ye not at all in the house of Aph Aphra. 
Roll thyself in the dust. Pass ye away, thou inhabitant of Saphir, having thy shame naked. The inhabitant of Zion came not forth in the morning of Bethzeel. Bethzeel. He shall, he shall receive of you his standing. For the inhabitant of Meroth waited carefully for good, but evil came down from Yahuwah unto the gate of Jerusalem. O inhabitant of Lachish, behind the chariot to the swift beast, she is the beginning of the sin to the daughter of Zion, for the transgressions of Israel were found in thee. Therefore shalt thou presence of Morsheth Gath, the houses of Exib shall be a lie to the kings of Israel. Yet I will bring an heir unto thee, O inhabitant of Marish, Marisha. He shall come unto Adullam, the glory of Israel. Make thee right. So what he's saying is, look, I'm about to wipe this whole thing out. But then he says, yet I will bring an heir to thee. Right. So what he's saying is at some point, I'm going to repopulate this land. Right. I'm a white. He's telling you, I'm gonna wipe everybody out. But at some point, I'm gonna repopulate this land. And he's naming cities. He said, you're going to come back to Adullo, right? You're going to come back to this town. You're going to come back to that town. Keep going. Watch this. Make it's important. Bald. Make thee bald and pull thee for thy delicate children. Enlarge thy When you say make thee bald and pull thee, what he's saying is cut your hair, right? Because it was, it, was a, uh, it, was a, it was a tradition of many of the Gentiles that some of our people used to follow, right? That when somebody died or when some tragedy happened, they would cut their hair. Right. And they shave their hair. So it's like if you look at you ever heard of like a monk. Right. You had a monk. You could they be wearing sometimes, you know, what I'm saying they be wearing like the all orange, you know, what I'm saying all orange, uh, you know, what I'm saying little robe or whatever it is. And they got the bald heads and they walk around like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like to imagine all of them do karate. That might be a little racist. But in my mind, that's how, you know, what I'm saying? be like, you know, what I'm saying it's like you you make the wrong move around them and boy. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like the Matrix or something. You know what I mean? Then light your butt up. But anyway, they, you know what I'm saying? Like some of them, they take vows, right? So it's like you might have a person that is of the same religion or of the same belief system as them, right? And they're not actually a monk. But if something tra tragic happens, then they might take a vow and they cut off all their hair. You know what I'm saying? Cut off all their hair and shave all the hair off of their skin. Like literally, you know what I'm saying? Like all hair, remove it from your skin. And then you kind of, you know what I'm saying? You put on your little thing, you know what I'm saying? Do it and take the vow. Well, they do that out of tragedy. They do that out of death a lot of times. And so the most high God is just saying, okay, it's going to be some tragedy. It's going to be some death. Listen, I'm going to clean it up one day. But listen, cut the darn hair like y'all be doing when y'all, you know what I'm saying? When y'all following these Gentiles, go ahead and do it because it's about to get rough, right? Because that's what, that's what the children of Israel did. They followed the Gentiles, right? So he just let them know it's about to get rough for you. Keep going. Watch this. Enlarge our law, by the way, our law tell us our we ain't got to get it, but our law tell us in Deuteronomy. I want to say it's fourteen, but um, in Deuteronomy it tell us we aren't to we aren't to cut the edges of our hair for the dead, right? Or or pluck our beard or any of that for the dead. We're not supposed to try to remove no hair uh, for the sake of the de dead. We're not supposed to put no scars on our body for the sake of the dead, right? Even right now, you'll see a lot of times. First thing we do, what do you think a tattoo is? Permanent ink. What does a tattoo have to do to your skin for it to be a tattoo? Uh, Go inside of it. What happens to your skin? Uh, Whoever uh, seen somebody get a tattoo? What happens when they when they put the the it goes inside? It goes inside. What happened though? What happened to the skin? <clears throat> it dies. Yeah, you like you see like you see dye in it. What else happens? Anybody ever see somebody get tattooed and they start wiping stuff away? Scar. The extra ink and what else? <laughs> You ever seen it? Y'all ain't never seen nobody get tattooed. So if you if you watch somebody get tattooed, right? They gonna do and it's a bunch of extra ink. So they wipe it away, but then it's also blood, right? Because it's a needle penetrating your skin. So it's putting the it's putting the ink underneath your skin. That's why you can't wipe it off, right? It's ink that's in the pen. I can write a pen on you right now, right? But it ain't gonna stick because it's not in your skin. So what the needle does is it takes that ink and instead of just writing it on top of your skin, it sticks it in there. So it punctures your skin. So of course, what do you do as a human? You bleed, right? So when you bleed, right, if something punctures your skin and you bleed, what, what do we call that? Pain. It, it may cause pain, but what do we call that? 
Huh? Bloodletting? Blood yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> right? What we call that? If you, if you, if you, if you run outside, you fall, scrape your knee. You injured yourself. What you gonna have on your knee? It's gonna be a scar. Right? So that's all a tattoo is. It's a scar with ink in it. Right? That's why it stays. Right? It's just a scar with ink in it. And our law, um, our law tell again, we don't have to get it, but our law tell us, it tells us that you do you are not to make scars or mar the side of your heads or cut cut your hair for the dead, right? It don't say if I want to cut my hair, you can cut your hair. You know what I'm saying? If I, you know, every week I get a lineup, ain't nothing wrong with that. A lot of the yeah. a lot of the Hebrew Israelites is crazy. They get there and get to get, get to tell you, you can't cut your hair. If you don't get your darn nappy head butt and groom your darn self, what's wrong with you? Let's say my man Absalom used to pull his hair every year. Yeah, Absalom used to pull his hair. Absalom had long hair. He used to pull it every year. But they tell you you can't get no haircut. They tell you you can't you can't you get no line up because that's that's shaving the edge of your beard. But they don't understand it. What 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 it was really saying is you can't do it for the dead, right? That's what the scripture said. You can't do it for the dead because that was the practice for the dead. So like you know what I'm saying, say you had a good friend, right? No, say you had a good friend, right? And your good friend died, unfortunately, right? So then some people would go and because he died, they sad, they cut off all the hair. They cut off all the hair off of their skin, right? That was a practice. That was a way of showing, showing that I'm mourning and I'm sad about it, right? A lot of people used to do it. Now there's still people that do that, right? In different cultures, right? It's not so much something done that's in America, but now what do we do when people die? We get tattoos, Right? So you do it and you say, you know what? I'm going to tap my, my dead homie on my arm or I'm going to tap my dead homie on my chest or on my leg or wherever I put it, right? Because what I'm doing is I want to have a scar to remind myself of what happened, right? So it's the same thing. These are all, these are all practices. These practices are ancient, right? You ever heard of pouring out, you know what I'm saying? Pouring out some liquor for the dead homie, right? A lot of people think that start with the game banger. No, that's in our book, Right? We picked it up, but that's in our book. It's called the the Bible calls it a uh, what's it call it a uh, a uh, drink offering. Drink offering. All right. It was called a drink offering, but people people in different in different cultures would have drink offerings for the dead. So that's where that practice comes from. It's like okay, pour out a little bit for the for the pour out a little bit for the homies for the dead homies and all that. All these things come from ancient practices. These are all traditions that we picked up because we've been surrounded by Gentiles, right? Which is our nature, right? The same thing that the Northern tribe did. Put the balls away. Y'all put them away. Just sit down. What's wrong with y'all? She trying to save y'all. But um, these are all practice that we, you know, we ended up picking up. So keep going. Let's see what else happens. Make thee bald and pull thee for thy delicate children. Enlarge thy baldness as the eagle, for they mm -hmm. are gone into captivity from thee. <clears throat> Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. With the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. And they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and, and his house even a man in his heritage. Therefore, thus says Yahuwah, behold, against this family do I devise an evil from which ye shall not remove your necks. Neither shall you Look, he said, family. against this family, I'm devising an evil. This is God talking. He says, against this family, talking about us, he said, he devises an evil and we shall not remove our net. In other words, he's going to put, put us in a trap that we're not going to be able to get out of. Right? You kind of look at fish when you're going fishing. What do you throw out? Well, nowadays you throw a fishing pole, right? But when you got a whole bunch of fish in one area, do it make sense to throw a fishing pole? If you want to try to catch them all, you're going to throw a net, right? A, a spear going to give you one, maybe two if you're good. You know what I'm saying? You might, get, you might get two or three of them at the same time if you got a spear. But if you got a bunch of fish just sitting out there and they all eating at the surface, you know what you want to do? You did get a neck, get all a butt, boom, and then get up under them, and you snatch it up like that, and now you just got a whole bunch of fish. 
instead of just doing one by one with a fishing pole and reeling them in or getting a spear. You know what I'm saying? What you African boy, you can get a spear. That was racist too. You know what I'm saying? You got to relax. You can't say two racist day in one time. That's why these white folks feel like they can get away with it. So they look, you know what I'm saying? You do that and you sit and you hit three of them at one time. That's good. You know what I'm saying? But if you got a whole thing, no, you throw the net. So he's saying, listen, I'm going to catch y'all in the net that y'all can't even get out of. He said, I'm divided. This is God talking to us. I'm devising an a evil against y'all, right? And when I say us, I'm talking about the children of Israel, right? It's important to know that. There's a lot of stuff going over in that land right now. Who been hearing the news? Anybody hear the news? About this a war? Mm -hmm. a war in Israel, Palestine versus Israel. You know what I'm saying? Heavyweights, you know what I'm saying? And they all killing each other up, right? It's a lot of that stuff that's happening right now, right? Now, most people looking at that and they say, oh, Israel, that's their land, right? And then there's other people like, hey, Israel unfairly took that land from Palestine, right? And so you look at you, nobody, a lot of people don't really know what, how it play out and what it really means, but that's our land and we over here, right? So we over here, they in our land and they fighting for our land. So what the Most High God is telling us here is, hey, y'all, when we were in the land, he's talking to us, right? So back our ancestors who used to live in that land, he's talking to them. He's telling them, y'all, I got a net waiting for y'all. I got some evil that I'm, 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 I'm thinking up for y'all. I'm going to put y'all in a net that y'all can't get out of. Watch what he say. In that day shall one take up a parable against you and lament with a doleful lamentation and say, we be utterly spoiled. He, has he said, look, somebody going to take up a parable amongst you. Right. He said, look, y'all going to be walking around talking about we are utterly spoiled. What does that mean? Uh, that mean that somebody treat me so good, even though I don't deserve it. You robbed. Spoiled means somebody took it from me. Right. With the, when you read spoil in the book, when they say spoiled in the book, it means something is it means it means uh, if I go to war. So if me and male got to let's say male is the queen of her nation. Right. And I'm the king of my nation. And I go to war and I say, Mel, boom, boom. All my soldiers is out here. You can handle everything over in peace or we can take it in the fight. And then Mel stands up and Mel says, we fight to the death. Boom, boom. And she slammed her thing. All her soldiers stand up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then I'm outside and I look at her soldiers and I say, we got them. Don't even worry about it. Let's go. Boom. So we go out there and we, we tear Mel butt up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all their soldiers laid out. Boom, everybody laid out. But guess what? We at male house. We at her nation. Guess what? Guess what she got laying around everywhere? Food, weapons, money. You know what I'm saying? iPhones. You know what I'm saying? All types of nice stuff. Whatever we see, whose is it now? It's ours because we just took it over. We won the fight. It's like a winner take all. So that's called spoil. All the stuff that we have. All the stuff that we took for mail in that situation is called the spoils of war, right? So when the, when the book says we have been utterly spoiled, it's talking about somebody has invaded us and took all of our stuff. They stole all our stuff from us, right? So we have been utterly spoiled. What else? He has changed the portion of my people. He said he has what? Changed the portion of my people. What is the portion of his people? The inheritance. Israel, the land. Our inheritance. Remember, when the Most High God brought us into Israel, we read all this, right? When the Most High God brought us into Israel by the hand of Joshua. If y'all remember, Joshua started to divide the land, right? He said, okay, uh, Caleb, you can have this part of Judah. Okay, and you, you can take this part, and you can take this part, and you can take this part. You take So all the land got divided up into the different tribes. Right now, the most high God came to us and through the prophecy and he's saying there, there are going to be people that create proverbs and they're going to say we have been utterly spoiled. In other words, all our stuff has been taken. Then they're going to come back and they say, you've changed what you gave me. In other words, I no longer have what you gave me, God. You changed the portion of our people. So what used to belong to our people, our name. Our land, our customs are no longer something that belongs to us. 
Keep going. Watch this. How hath he removed it from me? He said, how have what? He removed it from me. He said, how hath he removed it from me? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Help me out. I don't know what verse I want. Uh, probably give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse. Uh, what do I want? Probably verse like 49 maybe. Tell me if that ain't far back enough. Hold on. Huh? Hold on. You said Deuteronomy 28. 49. Ooh. Excuse me. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies. A nation who's. Yep, there. that's it. I don't understand. The Lord shall bring upon uh, this is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies, a nation mm -hmm. whose tongue thou shalt not understand. A mm -hmm. nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou look, he dead. shall do what? Eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land. He's gonna eat the fruit of your cattle. In the fruit of your land. Ain't that what the proverb just said? The proverb just told us, oh, we have been utterly spoiled, which means what? Rob. Our stuff was taken from us. And then he said, you've changed the portion of our people. You've removed us far from it. Right? That means he's telling us we no longer have our land. And now we read in Deuteronomy that gave us the same type of prophecies. The, the Deuteronomy prophecy told us what? Read it again. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until you be destroyed. Don't make sure ain't nobody ran in here, you know what I'm saying? Protect us. Which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, oil, or increase of thy kind, or uh -huh. of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. Mm -hmm. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high fence walls come down, wherein thou trust. Throughout all thy land, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy uh -huh. land, which Yahuwah thy God has given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and daughters, which Yahuwah thy God has given thee in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thy enemy shall distress thee. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. So right, he look, look, he said, he said, look, because the man... That's tender and what? What do you look at? Look how he described it, man. I'm gonna tell you. So this, this King James talking. All right, this is the this is how you this is how you speak in the time that King James was alive. This is how they wrote it. But I'm a translator for how you we say it today. The man that's what? So the man that's tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother. Look, the man that's tender among you and very delicate. What that sound like? Pretty boy. That boy is soft. Soft as cookie dough. Right. So look, the man that's tender and very, very delicate around you, he said his eye going to be like what? His eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Today, you're going to see a whole lot of men, a whole lot of men, right, that don't mess with black people. Now, every, now they act like they mess with black people, but every time they open up their mouth, they try to make something black folks fall. Right? They looking like, oh man, no, man, I'm telling you, all we gotta do is work harder. It's our fault. They you know what I'm saying? We out here killing ourselves, we out here doing this, we out here doing that. You know what I'm saying? Our boy just won't get a job. The Mexicans only coming in and taking a job because we don't want them. They say all this weird stuff. They sound like Republican. They hate Republicans, but sound just like a Republican. To have all the Republican talk about uh talking points to make it the black person's fault. When you hear those men, that's what this is talking about. It's talking about the men that's weak and they're very delicate, soft, right? He's telling you this is how soft boys start to act. When they, he said against the, the wife of his bosom, 
Yeah. You're going to see that these same boys start talking about women. Right? The black family is messed up because of the woman. The woman is rebellious. The woman, you know what I'm saying? The black woman, she don't want to, she don't want to submit to a man. All day on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, all day, these these weak, delicate, what is tender, these tenderoni men, this is what they talk about all day long. Right? This is the prophecy. Our men have been made tender. Now we know why. This is prophecy. The prophecy is telling us it's gonna happen, but we know practically why it happened, right? Practically it happened just because. Our fathers was removed from our home, right? Our fathers were beat into, into submission. And every time we would rise up, you know what I'm saying, and try to build something in this country, in our captivity, you know what I'm saying, what would happen? They would, they would break their butts again. You know what I'm saying? They separate them from women to where women had to rely on themselves and then men were raised by women. Therefore, they didn't see, you know what I'm saying, they didn't, they didn't, see, they didn't see the need of, to be a man in the traditional sense. So now they just start being men that they want it the easy way, right? They don't want to lead about a woman to, to righteousness. They don't want to lead about a woman into, into, into strength, into a better path. You know what I'm saying? Instead, they'll just stand far away in criticism without take, they'll take a bunch, they'll, 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 they'll hurl out a lot of criticism without taking any accountability for themselves, right? And that's where, that's where we go wrong, right? If you don't have accountability as a man, if you can't take accountability, shut your darn mouth. Shut your darn mouth. You know what I'm saying? You a husband or you want to be a husband, you got to see it that the whole thing is your fault. When you a man, you got to see it that as as men in general, when you speak, of, speak about men in general, when you speak about a specific man, you speak about his family. When you speak about men in general, right? And you go, like, oh, the black man does this or the black man has it the worst or the black man this, that, no, that's fine. But then you always got to say also, it's the black man's responsibility to make this thing go for his people. Right? But when you delicate, and you tender, you know what I'm saying? Your eye going to be evil against your own brother. You know what I'm saying? A wife of your own bosom. Keep going. Watch this. And toward the wife of his bosom and towards the remnant of his children, which he shall leave, mm -hmm. so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he has nothing left to him in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. Why do you think? Listen, a lot of the Hebrew Israelites ain't going to talk about this because they're guilty of it. Like it, look, when the Hebrew Israelite, every you can go to it. Listen, what we reading right now is what Hebrew Israelites. This is what they stand on. Any Hebrew Israelite camp gonna be able to probably quote Deuteronomy twenty eight to you without even opening up the book. They'll just recite that thing. That's the. This is what they stand on, right? I bet you they breeze past this one. All the stuff that we reading right now, I bet you they breeze past it because it's talking about a lot of the same people that's running these Hebrew or like con congregations, these Hebrew or like uh, uh, camps, right? Read that one more time, watch this. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat because of nothing. He said he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, right? Watch this. Because he has nothing left him in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. Right? He feel like he ain't got nothing. So guess what? Why do you think these boys leave their kids? Right? Y'all don't think it's weird that sometimes like you, you got these relationships, right? You be in a relationship and everything all good. You know what I'm saying? Everything working out. Everything smooth. I really love him. I really love her. Right? All that stuff. Then a baby comes. All of a sudden, can't stand them. I'm out of here. All the problems start coming. Everything split. Everything get rough. Right? We have to ask people. That's the prophecy. The prophecy is saying, listen, when you tenderoni and you weak and you, you know what I'm saying? You gonna wanna, you gonna wanna split. You gonna wanna eat your own children. And that's what we do as men. We ain't taking care of our kids. You eating your kids. Right? When you let a, you you when you let without putting up a fight, without seriously trying to get your kids, I know it's some stuff against us, right? But when you just let without putting up a fight, a woman take your kids from you, you are eating your kids. You ain't got nothing for them. Wake these boys up, send these boys somewhere else. I don't know what's wrong with these boys. That boy loud's all outdoor. Right? Keep going. The tender and delicate woman among Go get you. in the room, boy. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set her 
set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes mm -hmm. were evil towards the husband of her bosom and toward her son and towards her daughter and towards her young one that comes out from between her feet and towards her children, which she shall bear, for she shall eat them for one of all things secretly in the siege of, in straightness wherewith thy enemy has distressed thee in thy gates. Mm -hmm. Keep going. If I will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear the glorious and fearful name of Yahuwah your God, then mm -hmm. Yahuwah will make thy plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed, and even great plagues and of the long uh, continuance in sore sickness and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the distresses of Egypt, which thou was afraid of, and shall cleave unto thee. And every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law will Yahuwah bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Mm -hmm. You shall be left few in number, whereas you were the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou would not obey the voice of Yahuwah thy God. And it shall come to pass that as Yahuwah rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so Yahuwah will rejoice over you to destroy you. And he don't rejoice back. over you to destroy you, right? Watch this. This is God talking. He's saying the Most High God is going to rejoice. He's going to be happy to destroy you, right? Keep going. <clears throat> Y'all got to stop all this language. I'll be trying to catch myself too. We got to stop all this language of God allowed it to happen, trying to, trying to soften the blow. No, it ain't allowed. He made it happen and he is happy about it. You have to, you have to accept the God that we're dealing with because otherwise you won't understand him. This stuff will catch you off guard. It's okay if you look at it and be like, how could a God be happy about people suffering and, and people dying and all that? That's okay that you can look at that and be like, I don't want to serve a God like that. That's okay. That's your prerogative. You need to know these things so you can decide if that's a God that you want to serve. Because it's right to be... all. Look, all Yahushua said is he just want us to be hot or cold. Right? When you hot or cold, one of those mean that I don't want to deal with it. Just don't be lukewarm. Don't be in the middle pretending like, yeah, I, I really get it, but you don't get it. Right? I really love God, but I really don't love God. Right? Just pick one. Like, no, nah, I ain't serving this. How you gonna serve a God that let babies die? And happy about it. Right? Who want to serve that type of God? That's your decision. If you read this book and you say, this is right. I don't think women are treated equally. In the, 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 the. Look, if that's, uh, if when you read it, if that's, how, that's what you come away with, that's right for you, right? You should be able to say, you know what? I refuse to serve Yahuwah. That's fine, right? My job is to make sure you got all the information, right? Keep going. He, he going to rejoice over killing your butt. Watch this. And bring you to nothing, and you shall be plucked off from the land where you go to possess. You, you going to do what now? And plucked off the land where you go to possess. The land that we were going to possess, talking about Israel, he said, he, he said, we're going to go there and then he's going to pluck us off of it. So he's telling us before we ever get into the land, he told us when y'all get there, y'all going to get removed from it. Be careful, baby girl. Don't hit these cords, please. OK. Keep going. And the Lord will scatter thee among all people and from the one end of the earth until the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood. Right? He said, the Yahuwah will scatter you into the ends of the earth. We got taken, plucked from our land and scattered all over the world. Right? We ain't talking, these people got, these people, these people went to Germany and then went back to, to, to Israel. And the Palestinians are Arabs. Right. They were in the, what was now called the Middle East and then went into Israel. Those are the two groups that's fighting. No, no, no. Us, the Hebrews, the black man that was that was the black man and woman that descend from the people that was captured in the in the transatlantic slave trade and literally scattered all over the world through the slave trade. Be careful, baby girl. Right. Those people, they were plucked from Israel. And then scattered all over the world through the tr slave trade. There is a difference there. Hold, hold that. Give, uh, give me uh, uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 24. This is Luke chapter 21. Maybe give me uh, Luke 21, 21. Let me see. Is that glass? Uh oh. 
This is Luke chapter 21, 21. These people don't know what they're talking about. These people don't even know what they're looking at. Right? It's important that we understand, though. There's a lot of people right now, man. There's a lot of people that are truly messed up over this stuff that's going on right now in the world. Because they, you look at it, it's like this, the end of the world happening right now, right before our eyes. Israel's going to war with Palestine. This is it. They looking at it like this is just like when David, you know what I'm saying? They saying crazy stuff. This is just like when David was fighting against the Palestinians. Uh, I'm sorry, the Philistine, the 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 uh, Philistine. Philistine, right? It's like no, nah, I don't know. It ain't ain't like that at all. You know what I'm saying? They are inhabiting so called the places that that uh, Philistine was in, but it's not like that at all. Ain't the same ordeal at all, right? This is Gentiles fighting over our land. Two sets of Gentiles fighting over our land, right? Keep going. Watch this. And let them which are in Judah flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let them let them and let not them that are in the countries enter therein. For right, this is Yahushua talking. Right, a lot of people looking at this. Look, a lot of people looking at this, and they're like, "See, this is it." They think this is happening right now. They saying, "Look." Look, read it again. Watch what Yahushua is. This is the warning that Yahushua is given. Look. Let them which are in Judah flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not right. He tell them run. The entered the king entered into therein. Mm -hmm. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. He said, These be the days of vengeance that all things are written may be fulfilled. Christians right now think this is happening right now, right? Watch this. But woe unto them that are with child and unto them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Right? It's going to be great distress and wrath on this people. They think this is happening in Israel right now with the white folk. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. In Jerusalem. They shall do what now? They shall be, they shall fall by the edge of the sword and led away captive into all nations. So now tell me if you think that's about to happen next. Because for this to be the prophecy, this is what Christians point to, right? For this to be the prophecy, that means that the Palestinians have to defeat Israel and then they have to lead Israel. Israel have to then be led across all nations. I can tell you something. This has already happened, guys. What group of people was taken away captive and spread across literally all nations? It's only one group of people, our group. This has already happened. This is not what we read here from Yahushua is not something that's going to happen in the future. This has already happened. This is how we get here. This is where the Most High God is going to rescue us from. Right? You want to know what prophecy is happening right now? I got something for you. Grab uh, Isaiah chapter 63. Give me Isaiah chapter 63. Give me verse uh, 15. Then after that, we're going to Romans chapter 11. Talk to these people a little bit. It's Isaiah chapter 63, verse 15. Look down from heaven and behold from the habitation of the holiness of thy holiness and thy glory. Where is thy zeal and thy strength? The sounding of thy bowels and the mercies toward me, are they restrained? Doubtless thou art our father through Abraham, be it through Abraham. No, he said, though Abraham, look, he said, look, we're talking to God at this point. This is the prophecy, but the prophecy is presenting it as we're talking to God. So we look at a God like, yo, 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 you know what I'm saying? Give us a little bit of mercy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, look, we acknowledge that you are our father, though what? So Abraham be ignorant of us. And Israel he said, look, even God. though Abraham don't know who we are, why would Abraham not know who we are? We got kicked out of our land and we came after Abraham. Abraham didn't get to see the promise. Not only did Abraham not get to see the promise, he wouldn't recognize us because we're not keeping none of our customs. We're not in our land. Nothing about us 
is recognizable for Abraham. He wouldn't be able to, okay, those are the Israelites. <sighs> right? Abraham would be ignorant of us. So he's saying, though Abraham is ignorant, in other words, we don't have our heritage. We don't have the connection to our fathers. All of our stuff was taken away. Right? That's what Michael was talking about. Right? Keep going. And Israel acknowledges us not. Right? Our father Israel, he don't even acknowledge us. Abraham is ignorant of us. He don't know who we are. And Israel don't even acknowledge us. Talking about our father Israel. Right? Jacob. Right? He don't even acknowledge us. Why? Because we've been disconnected from our heritage. Right? It used to be a time that we would say, hey, I am the son of uh, Nehenadad. Right? And and his his dad was, you know what I'm saying, uh uh, Yusuf, right? And his dad was this, and his dad was that, and his dad was that. And we could trace it all the way back to Jacob, right? Through the father Judah into Jacob, or through the father Issachar into Jacob, or Asher into Jacob, or Dan into Jacob, right? We could tie ourselves all the way back to Jacob. If we could do that, well, then Jacob acknowledges us. Abraham is no longer ignorant of us, but we can't do that. So now Jacob don't acknowledge us, right? And Abraham doesn't know who we are. But watch this. But we say, hey, God, you are our father for sure. We know that for sure. Watch this. Keep going. Thou, O Lord, are our father, our redeemer. Thy name is from everlasting. O Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and harden our heart from thy fear? Return mm -hmm. for thy servant's sake, the tribes of thine inheritance. The people of thy holiness has possessed it but a little while. Our he said what? The people of our holiness. No, go back one more. Why hast thou made us to err from thy ways? Return. He said, why have you made us to err from thy ways and hardened our hearts against your ways? Watch, keep going. And hardened our hearts from thy fear. Uh-huh. Return for thy servant's sake, the tribe. He said, look, him. return. For thy servants. In other words, come back to us. Because remember, he said, the prophecy already told us that Yah would rejoice over destroying us. That means he's against us. So he's saying, return to our side, right? Right now, he's presenting us as saying, return to our side for thy servant's sake, for our sake, not for your sake, right? We need some help from you. So return to being on our team, right? Watch this. The people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. Right? He said, listen, the stuff you took from us, our heritage, the people of thy holiness, which is our people, right? We only had a little while in our land. Like in the grand scheme of things, we had like a few hundred years here. Then the Syria is gone. We had about a little Then year. another few hundred years, or not even a few hundred years, right? Then a little bit longer, and then Judah's gone. Then we out for a little bit. Then we come back a couple hundred years. And then after that, you know what I'm saying? Judah is gone again. So the mass majority of the world's history, we have not been in the land that the Most High God promised to us. So he's looking at it. He's presenting us and saying, we haven't really spent a lot of time in the land. Put the paper down, y'all. Just relax. Put it down. Put it down. Just relax. Right? We haven't really spent a lot of time in the land, right? And because we haven't spent this time in the land, don't you, you know what I mean? Think of us a little bit, right? Keep going. Watch this. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. Our adversaries have done what? Trodden down thy sanctuary. So listen, when all the George Floyd, Black Lives Matter and all that stuff were going on, you know, there was a, a Israeli official. When I say Israeli, I'm talking about the Jewish people, right? The, the white folks that's in uh, Israel right now. It was an Israeli official. And that Israeli official popped out. And you know what she said? She said, this Black Lives Matter thing is a problem. Said it on camera. They got it. You can look it up right now. Just said it. It's a problem. Every time black folks go to Israel, you can, you know what I'm saying? They try to hide these stories, but you can find them. You go super racist. They don't mess with black folk over there. If you, you know what I'm saying? No matter what type of black you is, they don't make no mistakes. If you black, we don't mess with you. Generally, right? Right? So you, you look at this stuff and you see it. Then the Palestinians, 
They try to act like they on our side. Same thing, though. You go over there, they ain't messing with your black butt. Not unless they feel like you're about to try to do something for them. Right? You got the darker Palestinians that get treated just like us. Just like us. Maybe even worse over there. Right? These things, these are the enemies of our people. Huh? These are the enemies of our people. These are our adversaries. And our adversaries, according to the scripture, are doing what? Captivity. Oppress huh? Oppressing us. Watch it again. I mean, say it, read it again. The people of thy holiness has possessed it but a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. Right? Yeah. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. What does trodden down mean? Uh, destroyed it. They stepped, stepped all, all over it. Stepped all over it. Right? They stepped all over our sanctuary. Right? In other words, our land, they over there walking all over our land. This is the prophecy. Right? What's happening right now is the prophecy. But it's not in the way that a lot of people think. It's not in a way that, that, that oh, this is, this, is, this is the sign of things to come. Let me tell you. It is prophecy. We just got to make sure we understand the prophecy. Grab, um, grab, uh, d -d 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 grab, uh, what is it? Matthew 24. Matthew 24. What I want, like verse five. Mm. I don't want the very beginning of Matthew 24, but I want when they ask the question about the uh, sanctuary. Hold on. You want, let me see. Because everybody, everybody anxious about the end of the world. Especially people who, who are a little familiar with the Bible. You get to read these things. And we, you know, we be going over a lot of this stuff. All these plays that's going to hit the world. Remember we talked about, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? This, this foreign, you know what I'm saying? Something that's foreign to this world. This guy that's foreign to this world. He comes down. You know what I'm saying? And, and he opens up a big old pit. And you got these weird creatures that come out. And they start killing people. This stuff sounds like a science fiction movie. Right? That's how Revelation, you kind of look at it, it seems like a science fiction movie. We like, oh, nah, you know, that's crazy. So some people looking like, well, if Palestine is attacking Israel, maybe some of that stuff is true. They look like, uh, are a bunch of locusts with faces like men and hair like women about to come attack us? That, that, got, that got scorpion tails and they sting you and you sick for five months and you wish you could die, but ain't nobody going to be able to deliver you to death? Like, is that about to happen? Right? That's how we kind of look at it because it's a lot of crazy stuff that we got to deal with. So people want to be ready for it. So when they start seeing stuff like this, they see Israel. Well, Israel's in the Bible. And you see a nation. And they think that's God's chosen people. People are fighting against God's chosen. Uh-oh, it's about to go down. That's how they look at it. But let's look at it. Let's make sure we're looking at it correctly, right? We know that that's not, we, we God's chosen people. Right. When I say we, I'm talking about the people that descend from the transatlantic, a transatlantic slave trade specifically. We are the, the chosen people of the Most High God. We are descendants of the Israelites, the ancient Israelites. Right. So let's look at these two sets of Gentiles. Right. The Ashkenazi Jews and the Palestinians. Right. They have taken on our heritage right especially the ashkenazi jews they've taken on our heritage so much that they're called by our name right they're called israelites they're called um they're you know they're called of different tribes they call they place judah they 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 claim to live in jerusalem right so these are all the different things that belong this is the heritage of our people they've adopted it then you have palestinians that live in our land right so let's see if we can get a, a, a clear picture from, from the prophecy about what's going on here. This is uh, Matthew chapter 24. What verse? Uh, Should be like verse like 5, 4. When he say, uh, when they asked him like, you know, what's the sign of your coming and when shall it be? Yep. Uh, you want 3. This 3. Okay, so this is uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. Watch what the book say. And he sat up on the Mount of Olives, and his disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be? And what shall right. be the sign of thy coming? And the he said, When shall these things? I want to make sure we understand the questions that are being asked. 
He said, tell us when shall these things be? So first question is about timing. How do we know when this is going down, right? And when he's talking about these things, Yahushua is telling them, you know what I'm saying? Yahushua is already communicating to, to him about, you know what I'm saying? Like the end of the world and, and, and him dying and, 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 you know what I'm saying? The regeneration of Israel. So they like, when shall these things be, right? What's the next one? And, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? He said, what shall be the sign of thy coming? In other words, how do we know that it's your time? Talking about Yahushua, right? And then the last one was what? The end of the world. The end of the world. Now let's carefully read Yahushua's response. Watch this. Yahushua answered unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and shall deceive many. And he mm -hmm. take care of wars and rumors of wars. There are going to be what? Wars and rumors of wars. There is going to be what? Wars and rumors of war wars. There are going to be wars and rumors of wars. He said, listen, don't even, it's going to be a bunch of people that come up talking about Yahushua this, I'm, I'm Yahushua, or I'm the Messiah, right? Or I'm the chosen one, or I'm the one that's going to lead you to, to righteousness. We've seen it come up many times, right? Throughout history, it's a dude that, that's in Ethiopia. That claim he he's uh he's the Messiah. It's a dude in Africa that claim he the Messiah. <laughs> it's been many people um in America who have claimed to be Messiah like fi figures, many people in Europe, right? It's happened many times over all times of the world. And you even have the guy named Muhammad, right? And he presented himself as he was like a Messiah type figure, right? He was the last prophet and all that. It's happened many times and a lot of people are going to still do it. It's going to happen again, right? So he said, don't even worry about that stuff. It's going to be a lot of people that pretend like they're coming in my place. But then he came back and he is like, there's also going to be wars and rumors of wars. So remember that the war and the rumors of wars in itself, he's going to tell you how to deal with it. See that ye be not thou, see that ye be not troubled, but these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Right. He said the wars and the rumors of wars should not trouble you. So every everybody who's on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and they freaking out because, oh, my God, this is what this is. This is it, guys. This is it. Stock up on water and, and rice and all this stuff because this is it. You know what I'm saying? The end of the world is near. You don't know the scripture. You don't know the scripture. The man tell you very clearly. Don't even be troubled. That, he said, that stuff, don't even be troubled about that stuff. Because the end is not here yet, based off of that. Right? Keep going. Watch this. He's giving you the time. Right? Remember, the question was, when shall these things be? He's trying to tell you, this is how you know it's not. You know what I'm saying? Like, get this out of the way. Don't be fooled by that. Keep going. Watch this. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be fam famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Y'all know how many earthquakes, big earthquakes where people dying in the last maybe two months? You had earthquakes and floods. You had floods in uh, in uh, Brazil. You had floods in, what's the one that's all the way up about Argentina? Um, you had uh, a huge earthquake in Morocco. You just had another huge earthquake in um, in Afghanistan. I think it was two, two, two of them things in Afghanistan. In um, uh, the Philippines, earthquakes, all types of earthquakes all over the world. I've never noticed them this much, right? A lot of earthquakes right now all over the world. I've never noticed them this much. Keep going. Watch this. Google has like this service, right? Where you can, you can, um, it'll search constantly like news articles for you based off of any keyword that you select. So you could say earthquake, right? And every time there's a news article or somebody published something that has say earthquake, it'll shoot it over to you. Just watch how often you're going to see this. And I'm talking about people dying. This is not like, oh, a little earthquake, no problem. No, buildings falling, things collapsing. This is a different time we live in. There. But look what this means. Keep going. All these are the beginning of sorrows. He said all this is just the beginning. Right. So when we get to this, we not. It's not the end. This is the beginning of the end, right? He said, we're just getting started when this stuff happens, right? 
So we have to make sure that our mindset is aligned with scripture. These things are happening. People are not crazy when they say that. Nation is rising against nation. Right? You do got the Palestinians against the 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 um uh Ashkenazi Jewish people, right? Then you also do have, you know, uh uh Ukraine against Russia, and you do have different factions and different nations starting to align themselves. Right? You got Saudi Arabia coming out like yo, yo, yo. We condemn what's happening out there in Israel and Palestine, but we need to make sure that we resolve this thing with a two-state solution. When you get to saying stuff like that, that means you're on Palestine side. Right? Then you got America. They don't even acknowledge Palestine. America like, oh, yo, we condemn the, the attacks that Hamas had on, on, on Israel. Those were brutal attacks. They ain't say nothing about the brutal attacks that, the, that Israel did on Palestine. So everybody choosing their sides, right? That's real. Same thing happened in Ukraine. You got like China. You got like uh, China, certain places in Africa, India, all them. They kind of aligning more with Russia. Meanwhile, you got America and Europe and all those. They aligning more with, with Ukraine, right? So those same lines are being drawn and everybody kind of staying, you know what I'm saying, on the same place. Well, that's how you get a world war. Right. But everybody look at it like, oh, World War Three, that's the end of the world. No. We had World War One. Was that the end of the world? We had World War Two. Was that the end of the world? No. World War Three is going to be a third one. And look, and this said it said nation shall rise against nation, don't it? Mm. And then what did it say after that? <sighs> And kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Uh -huh. These are the beginning of sorrows. Oh, he said we just getting started. He said when all this stuff happened, we already had two world wars, so that already got started. He said when all this stuff is happening, oh, we just getting started. Keep going. We still in the beginning stages. Keep going. Then shall they deliver you up to be aff afflicted and shall kill you. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. shall many of the def of the offended and then shall many be of offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and mm -hmm. many prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and because mm -hmm. iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold keep going but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And, sh and then shall the end come. Right. So he said the gospel is going to be preached to all the world. And then shall the end come. Right. Keep going. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Mm -hmm. let them which be in Judah flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Mm -hmm. Let him which is in the field return back to his clothes. Right now he's talking to black folk. It's black folk standing in front of him. He black. And he's saying, listen, at some point, the, when he say abomination to uh, make it desolate, he's talking about the Romans. Right? He said, at some point, these Romans about to park right on y'all doorstep. And when you see him, y'all better run. I don't know. I wouldn't agree. Huh? No, no. You're right. It's the Romans. Keep going. <clears throat> and woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For, when, for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world or to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if mm -hmm. any, Keep going. If any man shall say unto you, Lo, here's the Messiah, there or there, believe it not. For there shall rise false messiahs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold. Right. Like, um, understand what that what's being said there. It's gonna come a time that it's gonna be false messiahs and false prophets that's gonna show great signs and wonders. So, in other words, they're gonna be doing miracles. They're going to be looking at y'all. They're going to be looking like, oh, yeah, I am the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. Boom, I just healed this man. And we ain't going to have no way to prove like that that was a trick. 
We gonna look at it and be like, man, that thing look legit. That boy look like he really got some power. And that stuff is going to fool a lot of people. That's why even now, y'all see that I'm very careful. Y'all see, we talk on the fellowship call. I say it a lot. God ain't never spoke to me. I ain't never seen no, no for real, for real miracle. Right? Only miracles I saw are the dumb down miracles. Right? We dumb down miracles because we ain't never seen one. So we ain't got no scale. Like somebody who saw y'all with you or walk on water. When we sit here and a baby is born and be like, oh, it's such a miracle. They look at you like, what? Babies are born every day. What you talking about? I saw a man walk on water. I ain't never seen. Ain't nobody ever seen nothing like that. Right? <clears throat> so they looking at real miracles because we ain't never seen nothing real. We call anything a miracle. Oh, the sun rose again today. Oh, it's like a miracle. And it ain't a miracle. A lot of stuff and most of the stuff these people talk about ain't no miracle. You know what? I can see the crucifix in my coffee when I put the cream in it. Oh. That's a miracle. That's the type of stuff they be. That's the Catholic. That's the type of stuff they do. What they call it? Insignana or something like that. Stigmata. Stignama. What's it called? What's it called when the people got the holes in their hand? Mm -hmm. They get the scar on their hand. Search it. I think it's called stigmata. Stigmata or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, Sister Pamela knows. Sister Pamela will be knowing everything. Sister Pamela, what's it called? Is it stigmata? Stick nana, stick mana, stick. Stick mana, right? They got the holes in their hand. You know what I'm saying? They get the little wounds in their hand. And they be like, this came out of nowhere. I'm bearing the, I'm bearing the wounds of Christ. These silly darn people. Right? Knowing they but woke up in the middle of the night when everybody was asleep. They got a little knife cut into their hand because they they depressed and sad. It's the same thing. You know these people. They cut their wrist and do all that stuff when they, you know, start cutting themselves when they sad and depressed. It's the same darn thing. But now, you, it, when we do it, we do it for it's a sickness, right? So it's a it's a mental illness, a sickness because we, you know, what I'm saying we do this stuff to to get a certain level of attention, hoping that somebody will save us from ourselves. So it's like, okay, if I cut myself, you know, what I'm saying I'm toying with this idea of me dying. If I cut myself, you know, what I'm saying maybe that gives a person a warning. And then we regret it after we do it and we try to cover it up and all this stuff. So this stigmata says the same thing. You get is that did I say it right, Sister Pamela? Stigmata. I knew I had it right. Stigmata, right? So you know what I'm saying? So they cut themselves, you know what I'm saying? They just do it when everybody see ain't nobody looking. Okay. Cut this. Ah, ah, they do that like that. But now it's the same thing, cutting your wrist. But now you look like a miracle happened to you. So now you get a whole different level of attention. You know what I'm saying? They sitting there, they playing, they rollerblading and stuff, falling, they rollerblade, rollerblade, they hit one arm. Ain't nobody see them do it. Well, I might as well do the other one and call it a stick model. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ah! You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a miracle. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of stuff that we see. So we call all this silly stuff miracles when it was like, nah, these people that we talking about in the books are real miracles. So what's going to end up happening because we call stupid stuff miracles, we going to get so impressed. When one of these false prophets and false messiahs do some real stuff, they're going to be sitting there like, oh, you know what? Make this man stand up. You're going to be a man that you know. Yo, it's going to be your cousin. Like, man, that boy been crippled my whole life. Your cousin going to stand right up. Like, oh, man, I can't believe what this guy just did for me. You must be the living God. And we're going to start, not we, but these people going to start worshiping demons. They're going to start worshiping all types of stuff they ain't got no business doing under the guise that this person was sent from God, right? That's why everything that we do, it cannot be mysticism, yeah. It cannot be based off of what we see. We can't judge based off of what we see or judge based off our own understanding. Everything has to line up with the book. It has to line up with the book. If we had that standard, it's fine. If anybody gives us a prophecy, in other words, they tell us, X, Y, and Z is going to happen. Don't be too quick to reject it and don't be too quick to accept it. First, the prophet, whatever they say has to come to pass. They call themselves a prophet, a messiah, anything. You got to give me something that's going to come to pass. That's how we establish trust. Not because you, you're doing miracles. Right? Trust me, this stuff is a stumbling block. Yahushua himself is a stumbling block because he came Doing miracles. Now, he also came giving prophecy, right? And the stuff he said ended up coming to pass. So it's a little different. 
But because he came doing miracles and people looked at those miracles and they accepted it, it's going to be people that come with miracles and we're going to look at it, reading all the book. And a lot of these Christians going to be like, yeah, see, that's what happened when, when the Jews, right? The Jews didn't believe him, right? The Pharisees didn't believe him, even though he was doing miracles. Here's our chance again, guys. Here's another prophet. He's doing miracles. We have to believe him. And be like, okay, he's going to drop you on your darn head. You believe a prophet because the most high God gave him a word and the most high God made his word come to pass. That's why you believe a prophet. You don't believe a prophet because he's doing signs and wonders only. All right. Keep going. Let's see what else. Behold, I've told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert. Do not go forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. For as the light. He told us this now. This is Yahushua. We trust him. Yahushua is a confirmed prophet. He's the Messiah. He is the son of the living God. Right. So he told it. He said, listen. If they tell you, take your butt out in the desert, do not listen. If they tell you, take your butt out in the wilderness, do not listen. You shouldn't be going nowhere to find a Messiah. That is literally what they're doing right now. In Ethiopia and these different places where these people that they claim to be a Messiah, they're like, yeah, come out here. I want to show you the Messiah. That's crazy. Well, let's see what y'all should say after that. Watch this. For the light, for as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even into the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Right? He said everybody going to see the, the Son of Man just like when the lightning goes, if, if the lightning came all the way across the sky. Right? If you saw lightning that came all the way across the sky, he said the same way that everybody see that is the same way that everybody going to see the Son of Man. So he's answering all three of the questions. Right? What's the time of this stuff? Remember, they out there like, when is when this going to happen? You know what I'm saying? And what's going to be the sign of your coming? And how do we know the end of the world? So he answered it. He was like, look, after the gospel is preached, that's going to be the end of the world. Right? And then now he's telling them about his coming. He's like, listen, when I come, you're going to see it like the lightning in the sky. And then he told us about the time. And listen, don't worry about all this foolishness, all these wars and all this stuff. That stuff is just the beginning. Now, be clear, he's not clearly telling you it's going to happen at this point or it's going to happen at that point, right? He's just giving you precursors that these things must be in place before we even think about it, right? We still in the beginning of the end, right? It is ending. It is close, right? But these things that's happening that we see over there, many people ain't in nothing, man. They fighting over our land, right? And that's what Micah is telling us. Micah the prophet. So next week, what we're going to do is we're going to pick up a little bit more of Isaiah. And then after we look at as Isaiah, we're going to read about Hezekiah. Right. We're going to read about King Hezekiah. And then Hezekiah got a lot to cover. Right. It's a lot to cover with Hezekiah. So we're going to spend a couple of weeks on Hezekiah. Y'all willing um, and make sure we get an understanding. Any questions? Any questions? He is definitely broken. He lost his darn mind, did he? I don't know what's wrong with these boy. Uncle T. What's up? Uncle T. Why are y'all coming out of here? Uh, you got some money for me so I can come out there? All right. Well, I was just checking. I'll be there next Friday. I got, I got, I got, some, money. I got some money. Tell all the kids and Auntie Nock I said hi. Okay, I will do. Will do. Uh, I'll see y'all. I'm going to be there next Friday. All right. No all right. Well, let's pray out.